Hi, I'm Redneck Computer Geek. Welcome to my attempt at the cheapest possible 24 volt setup with controller on a power wheel with a mobility scooter rear end. Let's talk about everything it took to get here. Now, originally I set this up and I had the mobility scooter rear end running on 24 volts with the original stock wiring harness and everything. And it worked. I'll post a link for the video. But what if you wanted to do it right and you wanted to fully convert to 24 volts like it looks now? Now, it's got a lot more control capability with 24 volts. It's got a lot more control with the electric gas pedal assembly in it and with the controller. But what did it cost for me to get to this point? The first thing is, when you end up buying your mobility scooter rear end, you're going to spend some money on it. I ended up managing to get mine for $60 off surpluscenter.com. We'll add that to the list. Next, the real reality is, tires like this, they're just not going to cut it. So I ended up upgrading tires, which meant I also had to go and get something that had rims. And it also meant that I had to make custom hubs. You can see all of that in the original 12 volt video. So the tires with rims, in order to go to the snowblower 16 inch tires, were $40 altogether. So we'll add that. Now, the next thing is we're going 24 volts. That means we need 24 volts worth of batteries. I was able to go and get 24 volt, 9 amp hour batteries, um, sealed lead acid for $45 off of Amazon. It was a really good deal. They last on average with the controller somewhere around 20 to 25 minutes or so. Half an hour if he's just puttering around on the uh, gravel area. Minor lighting issue. Okay, so the next thing is you've got to go and buy yourself a electric gas pedal made for a scooter or for something like that. I found one on Amazon, it was $15. So we'll add that to the list. Now, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a 24 volt controller. And I looked on Amazon and I found 24 volt controllers. Now, the problem is I went with the cheapest one and then realized later I probably should have spent some more. So my 24 volt controller was $15, but what you end up realizing later after you buy it is that it's not weather resistant. And that's a key thing here. It's a power wheel. The kid's going to leave it outside. The gas pedal is weather resistant. The controller that I bought on the other hand isn't. A weather resistant controller is going to cost you somewhere in the ballpark of $30. So don't make my mistake. Buy one that's actually made to be outside. The next thing you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with a bunch of miscellaneous electronic stuff you're going to need. What I ended up doing with my controller, because it uses a bunch of proprietary connections for scooters, is I ended up buying a bunch of these two-prong extensions. And any time that I needed to clip off one of the controller setups, I just simply cut one of these in half, and then I've got one end to go on the controller, and I've got the other end to go on whatever it's connecting to. As far as the connection to the batteries, this worked perfectly fine. Um, to the motor, works perfectly fine. It doesn't seem to overheat. I've got a fuse in line with the batteries. I'll post a picture of that. So, miscellaneous electronic 
stuff. These are about $2.50 a piece on Amazon. You've got a switch that you need to go and put in. I ended up actually using a toggle switch that has an LED in it. And what I did was I wired it so that that LED is to the ground on the batteries and directly. And what that does is every time you push down the pedal, when it starts to go, it lights up the LED. So it gives the kid that little bit of extra red indication, hey, you're doing something. Um, so that particular switch, along with electrical connections, I wanted connections that I could take a light or two and seal up better so that they corroded less. And I also had to go and buy some gauge wire to extend. So about $25 worth of miscellaneous electric stuff. So all said and done, mobility scooter rear end, tires, the batteries, the electric gas pedal, the 24 volt controller, miscellaneous electronic parts, we end up with a grand total of $200, which really actually should be higher. It should be more about 215 to 220 because I should have bought a weather resistant controller. That was my mess up, don't do it. So right now, I'll grab the camera, I'll do a basic walk around on the unit and show you the basic hookup. So here's we'll the paperwork there. that you're gonna end up getting. And basically you're going to have this one, this one, and this one are going to be what you need. You're gonna need your power, you're gonna need your drive, and then you're gonna need your gas pedal controller. Now your gas pedal comes three prong already if you buy the type like I'm going to put in the description. And the rest of this is all add-on things. Now, the mobility scooter rear end, there is a braking function that you can wire in. But the thing about this mobility scooter rear end is it's gear reduction. And so the moment you let off the gas pedal on this, it slows down to a stop anyway. So it acts a lot like a regular power wheel as it is. So what I've done is in underneath here, we've got our controller. The controller is mounted up, and what I've done is the top piece I've put up there, and then I put all the wiring facing down, so that even though it's not weather resistant, at least the grommets that aren't weather sealed are facing in a downward location, and they're going to drain anyway. So like I said, I cut off each piece, and I wired in a connector. So this one here is the one that goes to the uh, rear end. This one here is the one that goes to the batteries. As you can see, it's going up through the firewall. And then the colorful three wire pack here is what goes down through to this foot control. Now, oftentimes you'll see the question, which nobody seemed to want to answer for me, where do I put my forward neutral reverse switch? And the answer to the forward neutral reverse switch question is that you put it in line between the mobility scooter rear end and the controller. Now to clarify, what that means is that when you read your controller's paperwork, it's going to say motor on the connector. You don't go directly to the motor. You go from the controller to the black and red wire coming in and the black and red wire coming out of a forward neutral reverse switch and that goes to the motor. So obviously if we come here and we lift up our rear end and we've got this little plexiglass cover that I heated up and warped over the top, we've got our mobility scooter rear. And all you need is this black and red wire here. The rest of it doesn't matter. This is your black and red wire in order to be able to power it. Now, on these mobility scooter rear ends, you also have to watch out that there's a brake lever for an emergency brake set. And make sure that's in a down position. Lock it in some way if you can. That way if somebody gets in here, a child opens it up because we all know they're curious, all that kind of stuff, that they can't manage to mess with it and put it in a different location. See, like that. And then we put this down, and we're all good to go. So if I give it just a little bit of pedal, 
a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and full throttle. And of course, reverse is the same. And that is one point of warning, is that reverse speed on this with this setup is exactly as fast as forward. And what that means is that you can do reverse donuts in this thing like nobody's business. Fun for the kid, scary for the parent. Um, I need to upgrade the front tires. That'll be another video later on as soon as I figure out how I'm going to do that. And here we are. I'm going to post up some video of John running around in this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and it cleared up a few things for you. Have a good day. So here's the big hill none of the regular power wheels can do.